So we got a call this morning for a Hynotic system. The throttles and the transmissions weren't working. So we went down and took a look, said it just needed to get bled. Went through the whole thing. It was filled with debris and junk and the, 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 uh, the valve body was just a disaster. I'll show it to you probably tomorrow when we put this on. But I took the tank home and I literally had to use a hammer because we were getting no, we were only getting 60 pounds of pressure and I wasn't getting anything on the valve assembly. We literally had to take a hammer and nail that through there. And now hopefully, let's see what happens. Hopefully we'll get some old antifreeze out of here. Look at that, and it's draining. So now we'll get some pressure on the tank. One problem solved. I literally had to bust through here with this and a hammer. Just dumped it all out. Look at the size of the chunks coming out of here. Banging it out now. Really bad. You can hear it dropping out. Look at the size of this stuff. So on the way, none of this worked. Look at the massive size chunks. My God, coming out of this Hynotic system. I got it all ripped apart. And just, now I don't hear any noise in here. This is a one we took off of uh, a Hatteras. It wasn't working properly. And he was only getting 60 pounds of pressure. And I couldn't bleed anything out. And I start from the basics. And I took the hose off of here. Well, off the valve actually. And I'll show that to you tomorrow. And nothing was coming out. So I took it off of here. Well, nothing was coming out. And I had 60 pounds of pressure. So that leads me to believe that there was nothing coming out of here. And I think I showed you, I used a hammer and a Allen key to bang the hole through there to get all the crap out of it. And look at the size of the chunks. Huge calcium deposits or ethylene glycol deposits coming out of it. So I've got most of it cleaned out now. So we're gonna have to bleed the whole system. We're gonna go through the whole system, all the valve bodies and everything, new gaskets and O-rings and stuff like that. I'll show you that when we get over there. But I just wanted to show you this before I forgot. I took this home just to after work. Crazy. That's the problem right there. Well, good morning. So we're back on board the 63 Hatteras. I got the Hynotic system all done, cleaned out. You can actually see through the sight glass now. I think what happened was is that, you know, you're supposed to, you're really supposed to use the Hynotic fluid in here, but most people in this day and age don't do that anymore. And it's a 50-50 mix of the glycol and distilled water. But if you don't use the right glycol, then there's silicates in it, there's borats in it, there's this, that, and the other thing in it. And I think what has happened is that over time that stuff has settled out and then not more than coagulated, but it's actually caked up and turned into a hard calcified plate down in the bottom. So we couldn't get anything out of here. So I've cleaned it all out. I've got new antifreeze. I'm gonna remount this back on the wall with brand new screws. We're gonna put it in different position because that thing got destroyed when it came off the wall. It wasn't, it was hanging on by a thread. So I'm gonna move that and then we're gonna systematically go through and blow out all these lines and then repressurize the entire system. And then hopefully from there, he won't have to worry about it too much from for the next 30 years. It's one reason why I like the Hynotic system. Everybody's going to the electronic stuff now. I can fix this stuff when we're underway. If it's electronic, I need a board, I need this, I need that. I'm not gonna have it. I can make this thing work offshore. And frankly, this thing probably hasn't been touched in 35 years. So that's pretty good for a system that hasn't had any service to it whatsoever to last 35 years and then really only to need to be cleaned out and the wrong stuff put in. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this. I'm gonna show you what kind of antifreeze we're gonna use and let's get this up on the wall and start getting it primed. All right, so I got the tank mounted, brand new stainless steel screws. I've put the Supply, uh, supply line back in. I still have this open, so now I'm just gonna systematically go through. I've already blown this line out, made sure that that's clear. Now I'm gonna put air in here and blow it down and out, make sure that we're not getting anything into the mixing valve set. And then um, 
I the turn the compressor on and the air nozzle uh, vibrated off of there and went into there. So as always, nothing is easy. We've got to make everything difficult. So now I've got to go find the valve for the Schrader, or the nipple for the Schrader valve down in the stringer there. I see it, but we've got to fish it out. So we're gonna do that now. I'll see you guys in about three hours when we get that out. All right, so I've uh, just blown out all the lines that lead up to both bridges. These lines here go to the actual controls, to the throttles and the transmissions, and those are bled out the other day. So I just bled all these out using my little compressor and this nozzle. So there's literally nothing left in the lines. Look how black that is. That is just, I, don't, I know you can't see it very well, but it's nasty. There was black junk and all kinds of stuff coming out of here. So definitely a good idea to start from scratch and uh, we'll just repurge everything. I think Matt's on his way down now. He's got the, uh, the diverters for the valves. So we got those all cleaned up. We'll get those put back in and then we'll start purging the system and see if we can't get some, some controls back today. <coughs> but definitely the best way to do this, you know, while we've got it all apart, just blow everything out, get it all cleaned up, make sure everything's good and there's no old stuff in there because that is just disgusting stuff. So we'll see what happens here, but well on our way, getting everything cleaned out and back to square one. All right, Matt's showing up with the valve bodies. So we're gonna put those back on. And it is uh, said that we're supposed to strain the antifreeze. So that's what we're doing right now, straining the antifreeze before I fill up the container. We've got all the lines blown out. And before I fill that up, I'm gonna go through and just blow air all through these lines again to make sure, and I've got everything loose up top to make sure all of the stuff is out. And then we're gonna start from, from scratch here. And doing research, and, the, and I think that what happened originally here is that they didn't use the right stuff and I think I had said that this is Napa here I think that's close what I found again if we're not going to use the right high nautic stuff it just needs to be 50 50 ethylene glycol and 50 percent distilled water the green Asian vehicles love the Asians uh, that has the least amount of stuff in it and that was what I found to be the best for this type of system. It doesn't have borats in it, it doesn't have silicas in it, it doesn't have any of the additives in it. So it's about as straight as straight can be in regards to just straight ethylene glycol and distilled water. So that's what we're gonna use. So if you guys are putting just the ethylene glycol in there and not the actual hyenotic stuff, then that's what you want to use because that's what's gonna happen is that all that calcium is gonna build up in there. I think it was the silica that was building up on the bottom there, which prevented this whole system from working, which has basically destroyed the entire system. So I'm gonna to continue to strain my antifreeze here, and we're gonna put it into the, I'm gonna blow it out and then put it into the tank and see if we can start bleeding this thing. Okay, so before I go any further, we've got the charging valve body almost back together again. I've cleaned out all the little orifices, there's a little spring in there, made sure that all that is clean, that was still pretty dirty. So we've got all that stuff cleaned out. Matt's filtering, and we're ready to go. I'm gonna put this last one in here. This goes in here like that. The spring goes inside there. And I can do this with one hand behind stuff. Come on, almost had it. This is a lot easier, there we go. All right, so that gets screwed back down there. Perfect, so we got all four in. They're not 100% tight right now, we'll go through and tighten it up later. But, so I've got my main line back on, coming up through here, I've blown all this out, I've checked that this goes into the valve body, we've got all of our valve bodies clean, we've got all of our lines blown out all the way up to the bridge and back, and then these lines have been taken care of yesterday that go to all of the transmissions and throttles. So now that we've got a clean Asian antifreeze, we're gonna start throwing this into the tank and pressurizing it. 
Okay, so I'm just bleeding it out here and there for the throttle. We want solid, a stream of antifreeze, or the mix of the glycol and distilled water. If not, then we've got air still in it, and then the transmission ugh, is back here. We've got here and there. It's the same thing. If I've got air coming out of there, it's not bled out properly, and it's not gonna work properly. Right, Matt? Right. Matt's got a haircut. He looks respectful again. Say hi to mom and dad. Hi, mom, hi, dad. Yeah, they don't know I got this haircut yet. Oh, look, mom I and dad. No idea. <laughs> We're, we are about 60 pounds. We've already lost a little bit, and we've already done, I think, third round of filling this tank up and then flushing it out, and that's what we have to do. It's gonna come down to this line right here at that arrow, right there. We bleed out the pressure. We take this cap off, put more antifreeze in, repressurize it up to 60 pounds, and just repeat the cycle until all the air is out of the system. So that's pretty much how you bleed a hynotic system, which I've gone over before, but this is a full reset of a hynotic system. It takes time. You're gonna have to go through about five gallons of the antifreeze or the cycles of the antifreeze to get this all bled out. So it's just a time process. So that's what we're gonna to continue to do. So that's pretty much about it. When we get it fired up, I'll do a video of that. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, comments, leave them down below. All right, that goes all the way up and all the way back. And this goes forward. Oh. All right, so I'm lying. This is Southern Comfort. Crap, now I gotta do mine. So it's going back, but not going forward. So I gotta bleed my system out too. But anyway, that's a wrap. There's bleeders right here. Bled all those out and bled both downstairs and the mixing valves are good. So we're good to go, that's it, I'm out. There's a tornado watch coming. So just fix the bilge pump on Ship of Fools, which is right around the corner. I'm on Southern Comfort and I'm gonna go check a few boats and we're out of here. Thanks for watching.